Okay, we're back everyone. We're here live at HP Discover. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, the co-founder of Wikibon.org. And we are live in Barcelona for HP Discover exclusive coverage here in Barcelona. And our next, next guest is Johan de Sheffley. Did I get that? How's That's that? perfect. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Not okay. easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a big wig at HP, SVP of uh, NGM of HP Technology Services Consulting. Really big job within the company. Uh, thanks for spending the time with us. I know my you pleasure. Of, you get a lot of customer visits. So, so welcome back. You've been on before, Cube alumni. So we're we're great to have you. So give us the update. What's different now since our last chat in Vegas? Uh, obviously, it was a different marketplace here in, in EMEA and Europe. So, so yep, yep. cloud's different here, right? So, uh, different requirements still. Uh, clearly, what, clearly, what we see is that uh, the level of maturity and the level of uh, trust of the customers in moving towards the, uh, the cloud is increasing significantly. I mean, uh, when we met uh, six months ago in uh, Las Vegas, and now you see that uh, customers really are convinced that cloud is the way to go. Uh, and by the way, you don't look cloud in an isolated way. You need to look at it from, what are the opportunities that are being brought by big data? How can we bring those opportunities through a mobility approach to the customers? And you of course need to have a very strong compute platform under it, uh, which can move from traditional IT to hybrid clouds, and I think that's the evolution customers are on right now. One of the things that we're, we've been talking about now for the past year, even since HP Discover in Vegas, we've been to Amazon reInvent, we've done a bunch of OpenStack stuff, we've been deep in the cloud, we're going to be covering the cloud, again, Amazon, all the OpenStack events, HP, VMware, EMC, IBM, all the top companies, it's clear, unanimous customers, there is, a, there is not traction, but mandate to have uh, an architecture in place to enable yep. this new preferred, new style of IT as Meg Whitman calls it, but reality is it's the modern business, right? So that's big data analytics, that's the edge of the network, internet of things, mobile devices, but under the hood, <laughs> an enterprise is moving from, I don't want to say stone age, but you know, old legacy stuff, you know, servers and racks and stack to fully integrated yep. operating systems of the data center, cloud, workloads, integrated applications, you guys have pods, a lot of complicated stuff. So we're hearing, yes, 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 we got to do this. Now you, your, your job is to say, okay, let's sit down and build an operator, just sit down and construct those architectures. So, so I got to ask you, what are the top three things that you're seeing from customers right now in terms of the needs that they say help us with? Yep, uh, so clearly, uh, as I mentioned, uh, customers are convinced that they need to move towards the cloud. You know, this is a journey. It is not something that you turn off. You know, customers move from consolidation into virtualization, and now they go to in, into the cloud. And depending on, you know, business unit, uh, kind of service they need to deliver, they are at a certain point in that journey. And what we have done uh, within HP, we have developed a set of save seven services, seven services that start with an assessment and that end with a management uh, solution. But all of those steps are built in such a way that the output of one service can be used as the input of the other service. And it's really, really, really important uh, to uh, share that with, uh, with our customers because that means whatever point they are on the journey to cloud, whether they are on the traditional IT, whether they are on a, on a private cloud, whether they want to move to managed cloud or to public cloud, we can hook in their journey and give them the right level of services. We provide advisory services, strategic services. Of course, application transformation is important. Design services, that's why we are here today. We help them implement, we help them operate, and we have the educational services around it. Because whether it's cloud or mobility or big data, you know, this is different compared to, uh, uh, to traditional IT. And that means that our educational uh, offering needs to evolve along with the new capabilities that are offered. Johan, the average age of an enterprise app, uh, based on the work that we've looked at in Wikibon communities, uh, almost two decades old. Yep. Um, so that's got to be a challenge in terms of designing a cloud roadmap for your clients. You mentioned application transformation, but of course transformation for the sake of transformation doesn't make any sense. So I wonder if you could talk about, 
Is that a trend that you see in the marketplace, that sort of average age, you, can you, you know, validate that? And how do you help customers navigate through that challenge, yep. particularly as they're going to cloud? So I think one of the richnesses we have within HP is that we have a service catalog that is extremely broad. We have a service catalog that is really linked to the products that we bring to market, you know, service storage networking. Uh, we have a service catalog that is uh, linked with ITO uh, outsourcing, but also ar around application and around application modernization. And that means that our colleagues uh, from the uh, uh, application modernization business, they can really help customers to build those new applications. You know, and like with cloud, it's not something that you turn off. You have strategic applications that you want to let involve, but you also have strategic applications that you want to write completely new. And I think what we can help, uh, where we can help a customer as well on the infrastructure side as on the application side, is to build a plan on how you move from legacy uh, to new. And we can do that because we have done it A, internally, and we do it with a lot of customers outside there. And we can do it in an integrated way because we have those infrastructure services, we have the application services, and we have the software management services to help the customer build and manage what he needs around the cloud. Okay, so you go in, you do an assessment, you help the customers plan, help them figure out where, you know, where they want to go, what the best roadmap is to get there, you actually do a design. What's the outcome of, of your services? Is it a full-blown plan, tells yep. me exactly what to yep. do, what to buy, how to, you know. So there work. again, let me come back to the journey. Uh, and, you know, depending on where a customer is on that journey, uh, we can come uh, with a high level plan or with a more detailed plan. I would say the first thing a customer needs to know is you know, what is the strategic approach he wants to take. And then we can take that strategic approach which is reasonably high level, uh, which is probably more targeted toward the CXO in the company, and then we can turn that into a more conceptual. I would say the first one is like, what do you want to achieve? The second one is, how do you want to achieve? The first one is more high level, the second one is more detailed. And when you go into the detailed plan, you know, you look at the plan, you link it to where the business needs to go, you build a proof of concept, and you help the customer to understand how he can move to hybrid cloud. Now, when you get to the point of the customer say, okay, great, I love the plan, thank you, wonderful, I like the design, who implements? You know, um, when you have a big, you know, a, a master plan, clearly what is happening, not only from an executional uh, capabilities point of view, but also from a financial point, you know, from a financial point of view, the plan is, uh, you know, cut in several pieces. And one of the things that we can really uh, assure to the customer is that, for example, what needs to happen around the data center, we can help them with that. You know, what needs to happen around the, the network, the connectivity, the mobility, we can help that, uh, them with that. So once you have a plan, you need to identify you know, what are the different steps, in what priority do you need to take them, uh, what is the cost, what brings uh, return very quickly, and you make an assumption of all that, and then you make a proposal and you go with the customer. But the good thing is that within HP, we have a lot of capabilities ourselves, and on top of that, we have an attitude of partnering with other uh, partners out there or other providers out there. I mean, it's the DNA of HP to work with partners. So when we go into a complex project, we see where we can add value, but we also align with partners where they can help uh, value. And I think that's one of the tremendous attitudes that we can bring uh, towards the customer. I know there is no lock-in, it's a very open approach. So uh, we talked with Sargilai, um Many yep. times, we love having him, he's so good on theCUBE, trying to get him to come by. But I always ask him the question, it's so confusing on HP Cloud, it's, can you like straighten it out for me? Like, and, he, and he did a good job, and I want to put it out there. If you build and operate, a bunch of HP people get involved. If you're consuming, it's managed cloud or public cloud. Pretty much that simple, yep, yep. right? Do you agree, is that a good uh, way to that, look that, at that's, it? That's absolutely, uh, that's absolutely the case. And when you look at the keynote uh, speeches that Mac and Bill uh, Vecti uh, made, it is around you know, the fact that we can help customers or build an environment where they uh, consume uh, IT, or we can help them to consume the IT that we uh, deliver for them. And this build and consume ID is supported by hardware products that we can deliver, software problems that, uh, that we can deliver, and then the services that come or from TS Consulting yep. or from ES. And I think it's one of the richnesses that we have is that we can build that end-to-end -end approach. And honestly, we have a very, very deep belief that as we move forward, hybrid cloud is the answer to the, uh, to the issue. Because like customers do not move from day one to day two into virtualization, customers will not move from day one into day two into the cloud. It will be gradual. How do you move traditional IT 
into private cloud? How do you move from there into managed cloud? How do you move from there into uh, public cloud? And for many customers, it's going to be a combination of all that. And I think one of the values that we can bring is that we can not only have an idea about it, we have a point of view, but we also have the different resources, the different products and solutions within the company to bring that. Okay, so let me simplify it then. So customers, the developers, startups, love Amazon. Because it's like a single product, they go there, they log in, they do some development, DevOps if you will, they build their app, they're mostly developers, not hardware guys. So they love the appeal to Amazon. And then they grow, <laughs> grow and then realize they got to host their own stuff and then may use some cloud. So it's a very simple model to understand. Yep. Enterprises are different, they're very complicated. And HP has a diverse customer base. So, you know, that's just, everyone kind of knows that, it's kind of known. So you had a diversity of customers. Yep. That all have complicated stuff. There's no one enterprise that looks and tastes the same, right? So, which you would agree with, probably. So, assuming that, how does the HP's approach work for all these different sets of customers? Is it the modular approach? I mean, do you get involved on the front end? Um, take us through the, how you guys yep. attack that market, so, knowing that almost yeah, every customer is not the same as the next we one. We attack that market in the in the following way. So, within consulting, we have three types of services that we deliver. Uh, we have a kind of advisory services, and we will deliver those advisory services to uh, experience workshops. From advisory, we move into transformational, and from transformational, we, where we help the customer build their cloud, we deliver the integration services. Let me come back on the advisory services. What we have done is we have created a structured approach. It is a three-day deliverable, uh, where we have an experience workshop, and we go in with a proven methodology, we go in with different entities of the customer, IT, the business, and finance, and the outcome of such a workshop is a plan on how to move forward. And we have those structured uh, workshops around cloud, around mobility, around connectivity, around big data, and around information management. And so that is the starting point, and the output of this And that's a menu, though, that's a menu item, right? It's, it's not it, a comprehensive thing. It is a menu, it is a structured approach, but the content of the structured approach is really customer specific. So what we try to do is, because we focus on the enterprise business, you know, we look at the specificities of a certain enterprise, but we put it in a structured program so that we can execute in a structured and disciplined way, and we know that after a few days, we come with outcome that is usable by the customer. And then from there we can go or to integration, or we can go to transformation. Tell me about transformation. Transforming IT, <laughs> that's been an abused word. I was on a crowd chat yesterday at the Dar Gardner Data Conference last night discussing this with a lot of the thought leaders around transformation, and it's being kicked around as a buzzword. I don't want to say buzzword, an over-abused word. It's a punchline now. But So let's, let's go down the realities of transformation. Describe what that means specifically that you get involved in. Yep. So, you know, transformation can mean two things. It can mean a transformation uh, to the business, and we strongly believe that IT can be a very strong enabler uh, to influence uh, uh, you know, the results of the customer, whether it's growing the top line, whether it's uh, managing cost, whether it is mitigating risk. But then you know, when you want to implement, you need to do it around certain platforms, around certain topics. And for example, for us also transformation is when we help a customer to move from a legacy storage environment to a three-par environment. When we help a customer to move a full legacy networking environment into an HPN network environment. And clearly, what you need to do there is you need to assess where the customer is, understand the readiness, build a plan, and implement it step by step. And I think one of, you know, one of the very good uh, you know, examples we can bring forward here, I, I proposed it, at, or I uh, talked about it at the Innovation Theater, is that the smart learning project that we implemented in um, in, in Dubai, where we brought together the capabilities of what we have in mobility, in um, big data, and in cloud, to build an education platform for the country. And it's really a nice example. You know, the country has an objective. How can we, feel, how can we build the next group of leaders for business and for, uh, and for the country? And so they started to develop a very ambitious plan and they wanted to roll it out. You know, we met the customer at uh, Discover in, uh, in, in Vegas about six months ago. You remember that that was June time frame, and the new solution needed to, be, uh, needed to go live in September with the new sc uh, school year. 
and with very strong program management, with a very strong plan, together with the customer and with a number of partners, we managed to implement a completely new education system based upon the usage of tablets, based upon digital content, based upon uh, uh, you know, analytics to see how p uh, pupils uh, evolve in that system. And I think that is a really good example on how two, that's I... almost two and a half months. It, it was that's a, insane. It, it, it how did you do that? Uh, uh, you know, I don't talk about two and a half months, it's 72 days. Oh, man. So, and I mean, it was a very structured, a very disciplined approach, as well on the customer side as on our side. We put an extremely uh, experienced program manager on it, and we put someone on it with a lot of tenacity. Someone, you know, who really wanted to move forward, who had made his personal pride, to make that work. And the good thing that I had as a feedback from the customer yesterday, you know, the customer, the director general of the customer said, you know, it felt like this person was part of our team, not of HP. And those of us who work with consultants, that's always a very good sign. I mean, that's, I mean just, uh, whether it's 72 days or 90 days or 180, still those are ridiculous time frames in terms of old school metrics. If you go back to, you yeah. know, consulting projects back and you know, just go back 10 years ago, you know, you're looking at, you know, next year, you know, second half of the next year. You know, these are, and those were shortened down from the three-year rollouts uh, of the old SAP days, if you remember the, those days. Um, so I got I to drill on a couple questions on that. Okay, so if you're looking at the 72 days deployment, okay, there's a tenacity on the team, you had great expertise, uh, unique uh, stars lined up, but still that's good time to market, time to value. So the question Dave and I were talking last night, so Wikibon's uh, some contributors and CIOs in Dave's organization were talking with us yesterday, last night, and the question came up and said, new technology eliminates um, roles because of automation, that's a good thing. And sometimes they said, so the key to success is eliminating the tools, the legacy tools that were for those, those tasks or roles. So with automation, with cloud, and service catalog, and all, these, all the greatness that, that's happening right now, you're seeing new value chains, if you will. So, okay, those, some things are being automated away, abstracted away with technology. So the question to you is, what are you seeing being abstracted away, automated away, and, and if, if those things exist, what are they? And two, what are the legacy tools that are going away with it? Because a lot of customers are holding on to legacy. Yep. Can you share a perspective on that? Uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's as much a question of mindset than of tools and of technology. Uh, you know, the business, uh, the business, not the IT business, but the overall business are, are around us is moving very, very fast. And that means that the customers really need to develop new applications to address new business opportunities really, really, really fast. And that, you can only do that when you try to reduce complexity by making choices. And, and that's what we advise customers. By the way, that's also what we do in, in our business. When we say that we are focused around cloud and data center computer consulting, that we are focused around uh, mobility and networking consulting, and that we are focused around big data and storage consulting, you know, we do not want to be everything to everybody everywhere. It is simply impossible, because you need to simplify and you need to be focused. And when you simplify and when you focus, whether it's on tools or on methodologies, you know, you can have more people that understand what the possibilities of those tools are and you can develop uh, quicker. I also believe that, you know, it is more important to have people to understand where the business is going and how you can translate that into IT uh, opportunities rather than focusing too many people on the tools and on the systems to realize that. This is our job, this is where we can help customers. You guys have an amazing uh, bench of people to, to bring to the problems. A lot of your customers are here at Discover. A lot of energy and a lot of solutions. Um, as Meg said, you make it, you, you support it, and you, and you service it. Um, so, so I got I to gotta ask you, you know, last question. Share with the audience your perspective. You know? Take your executive hat off, put your industry hat on. What's, what's the experience like here at HP Discover Europe? What's the focus, what's the vibe? And, and just put a bumper sticker on, on the show here. What's it all about? Uh, is it just an extension of, of uh, Vegas? What's the, what, summarize what's going on at the show you know, your perspective. I think I've been to all uh, Discover events that, uh, that we had so far. And you know, I really have a good feeling about this Discover because you see that you know, it's becoming better uh, event after event. And I think it's not only the feeling that we have within HP, but you also see it uh, on the customers. By the way, we have a record uh, number of participants uh, in this Discover, which means that customer comes back, which means that they see value. And I think one of the unique things we can have with Discover is that we can show everything that we have in one HP 
going from what we have in the printer business, the PC business, uh, what we have on the server business, storage, networking, all the services around it, whether it's software services, whether it's e.g. hardware services, uh, or whether it is uh, outsourcing and uh, ES services. So I think, you know, for me, it, it is really a boost. Uh, and I think, you know, there are not that companies who can bring that many things together, who can bring so many customers together, who can bring so many HP people together. I mean, we have a few thousand people of HP here to support the event. And, I mean, the feeling I get and the feeling I believe our employees and our customers get is that this is fantastic. I mean, this is something that is really boosting the company. And by the way, I think when you compare HP to where we, you know, where we are today, compared to where we were a year, two year ago, I mean, you can feel the vibe. And I think this is really the thing that I would like to conclude with on this Discover. It's a top event. Thank you very much for your time. I know you're super busy, and, and thank you for sharing your experiences. You know, we, Dave and I always say the time to value is a big metric. You know, you're seeing acceleration with software and technology of time to market, time to value, new apps, new disruption, uh, new economics, just <laughs> new value. So it's super exciting for us to, to hear that. Thank you very much. My this pleasure. Is, this is live inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We are live here at HP Discover for exclusive coverage of HP Discover 2013. You'll be right back live from Barcelona, Spain after this short break.